hey, here is a little quick um, prelude, if you could call it that, to something that's uh, about to happen. Rather exciting. A, uh, a guy on Instagram called, or goes by the name of Gear Ant. It's not his name. But uh, check out his stuff here. Some examples of his work. He has agreed to take on a couple of commissions that I have. He is going to do alternate artwork for these two. So I've got my turbo flange and my metal zone and they are going to get the gear ant treatment. So um, I'm about to put these in a box and they're going to get shipped off to New York City and um, I'm very excited. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he does with them and um, fast forward to I guess two or three months from now when I get them back and they look way more awesome. Whoa! Okay that was weird. Um, well it's been three months I recorded that bit uh, on the 27th of May and it's now the 23rd of August so with shipping and obviously the process involved in painting and uh, hydro dipping and all that business that, uh, that is involved um, and it is a cool uh, process that Gear Ant puts these pedals through. I will actually show some of the uh, progression picks that uh, that went on in a little bit but uh, I'm sure you're eager to see how they look and I have them here if you remember what the stock metal zone and turbo flange look like. They now look like this, so uh, I'm very happy, as you can imagine. They are so, so much better than I could have imagined. Um, let's do these one at a time. First of all, we'll talk about the turbo flange first. So this is hydro dipped, hydro dipped, hydro dipped. Um, it's a really cool process of placing, I'm not sure if there's a particular solution or if it's just water, I think it's just water, and then you place um, a pattern, like a film, uh, on top of the water, spray it with a, an adhe a special adhesive, and then you put what you want to dip in the water through the film, and then the film just kind of wraps itself around whatever it is, and then uh, you can basically then take the pedal out, dry it off, spray it with a kind of lacquer or something afterwards if you want to preserve it or whatever and then you get this you get uh, an in absolutely incredible finish check that out it's this purple um kind of oriental blossom kind of a pattern and uh it has to be stripped back to the bare enclosure as you can imagine um before being done and um then he has to go back and put all of the lettering back on. So he does an amazing job, I think, of um, restoring the original fonts and uh, labelling and stuff on the pedal. So uh, I'm really, really happy with that. It's fantastic. It looks so much better than I imagined. I was thinking in my head, based on what uh, other pedals he'd done and I'll show some examples around my head right now um, one of them being the hyperphase maybe I'll put that here uh, the hyperphase uh, is what made me think I want that done to my turbo flange because it looked so good uh, but in purple because it's a purple pedal and you don't get many purple pedals and I really I don't know, I just associate flangers with being purple uh, because I'm basic. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. I haven't even had a chance since it arrived back in my possession to plug it in and give it a go. Not that it will sound any different. It's exactly the same pedal inside. 
but you know, it's uh, the only slight reservation I have is that now I no longer know what the modes are from memory. All I remember is that uh, mode seven, so all the way, is that one or no, it's that way around, sorry. Mode seven is my favorite, <laughs> which is the uh, step mode. Uh, so yeah, the step flanger is probably my favorite mode in this. But yeah, we'll get to some sounds later on. Um, moving on, so happy with that. Moving on, the metal zone. Now, uh, this has had probably not uh, quite as impressive a treatment as the turbo flange, but it still looks outstanding, in my opinion. Uh, so, the cameras are probably not going to pick this up because I've seen so many pictures when it was being done, and I'll put some pictures up again of the process behind making this. Um, and the colour of this pink, <laughs> and it is pink if you can't already tell, it's the most eye-hurtingly neon intense pink that you've ever seen in your life. It is really out there. It's literally like a highlighter pen all over, like a highlighter pink, but also like almost hurts your eyes to look at it too long, especially in like direct sunlight. Uh, but it's awesome. I love that about it because I don't know. I felt like it uh, should look as harsh. Is that the right word? Probably not. But yeah, I wanted it, I wanted it to look as um, striking. Let's say striking uh, as it sounds. <laughs> so uh, obviously, when you stomp on a metal zone, everyone knows about it. So uh, I kind of wanted it to stand out physically as much as it does sonically. I gave him complete carte blanche, by the way, to make this. I was just like, whatever you want to do with the Metal Zone, dude, you do what you want, because I trust your judgment. And he was like floating a few ideas around. He was like, what about this? And he sent me a mock-up, actually, of this. And I was just like, oh, my days. Yes, do it. Um, a few other little touches that I uh, wanted um, added on. Uh, first of all, I wanted him to put his logo on the front. So on the front panel or back panel, whichever way you look around it, uh, Gear Ant's logo on the back front, whatever panel there, just because I wanted to, I wanted his uh, his name stamped on it. Really, I just like you know credit where credit's due. Make sure that the world knows who made this thing. The other little touch uh, design feature that I wanted on it was that you might have already noticed this. FE2 instead of MT2 on the front. And um, the reason behind that is because at the last minute, it was literally just before he started like doing the lettering on this, I had an idea. And you're probably familiar with my good friend Brian at uh, Flock Effects, who is over in the States. And I had already got a few pedals that he was sending to me. So my idea was if I was saying to Gear Ant, if he could send these pedals when he was finished with them to my friend Brian, he can put them in the same box as this other stuff, send it over to me in one in one go. So it would be a cheaper way of doing it, basically. So he was happy to do that. Brian was obviously very happy to do that because he got to play with these new pedals. And um, yeah. While we were in that kind of discussion, Brian said to me about potentially modding this. So I had previously had experience with one of his modified metal zones, and you can probably see that video on my channel right here. I'll put a, not a link, but I'll put a link down in the, in the description for that video if you want to go and hear that. Um, so yeah, his version of this pedal, in my opinion, completely blew the other options, the stock and the Wazacraft version, out of the water. So he suggested modifying this one as well, and I was completely on board because I loved his mod. So 
I wanted flock effects to some kind of nod on the outside to uh, the modification that he had done inside or would do inside. So that's why that says FE2. So this is the flock effects modded metal zone with gear and paint job. I'm very, very happy with this. So you would think that uh, that's the end of it and I'd play through them and the end of the video. However, before I do that, there was a surprise purchase while all this was going on. There was another pedal that Gear Ant had made during this kind of time and uh, he put it up on his Instagram and I saw it and just I thought, oh my days, I need it, I need it um, and I bought it. So it's prepare yourself because it's amazing. How, how awesome. So, <laughs> as you're aware, this is a Boss DS1, and um, he has done the most unbelievably cool, hexagonal, multicoloured paint job on this. And I just had to have it. It, um, it isn't perfect, because there's like some, I think he, uh, there was some process where it like got smudged on the sides. Um, but I don't care. See, on the top and on the back and most of the sides, it's perfect. It looks fine. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I wanted this so bad. I was like, yes, that's everything I could possibly want. And believe it or not, it's my very, very first DS1. So uh, somehow the DS1 has completely bypassed me by. I saved my first DS1. Technically, this <laughs> technically this is my first DS1. Uh, <laughs> although I'm not really counting it because if you've seen this on my channel before, and it was a long time ago that I featured this, there is very, very little. DS1 actually going on here, as you can see. Uh, this is basically just, this is Flock Effects unleashed, basically. This is Flock Effects going absolutely insane and putting so many synth and filtery type mod things in this thing. So yeah, I'm not counting that. <laughs> because it's not really a DS1 anymore, um, whereas this obviously was. So, while I was in the process of sending these pedals off to Brian, Brian was then talking to me about modifying another DS1 that he had, and he was sh showing me some uh, sound clips, and I just felt his modified version of this pedal sounded so much better so uh, i was like could you could you modify this one as well when it arrives and he was like oh, of course i will bless his heart so now i have not only a modified a flock effects modified metal zone but i also have a flock effects modified ds1 and um i'm not technically minded i do not know for the life of me what these mods are i can't explain them or describe them all I know or care about really is they now sound, well, this sounds, I would say, about 20% better than it did before. Um, the stock DS1, I think, sounds, I'm sure it cuts through a mix perfectly, like originally, and that's why it's so popular. But for me, it just sounded a little bit harsh, a little bit top-endy, I don't know. Um, but yeah, his mod basically smooths out the distortion and it just, you'll hear it in a minute, but, uh, yeah, I really, really love how, how it sounds. And then in the case of the Metal Zone, if you haven't heard it already, his mod basically takes away all of the fizzy, hissy, top-end harshness that you get with these pedals, that these pedals are famous for. Um, obviously you can... The, the EQ on these pedals is so ridiculously wide 
that uh, you can get it to sound pretty much however you want. Um, but yeah, he basically, he's toned down a lot of that crazy uh, fizz and, and the hiss that you can get with, with like the more extreme settings. So you can still get the, the range of the frequencies with the equaliser. Um, but it sounds a lot better. It just sounds more usable across a lot more of the range, in my opinion. So I'm very, very happy with this. And I'm now in the kind of unprecedented position of now having a lot of distortion and overdrive pedals. And my next board is going to be it's going to be really hard for me to uh, to try and narrow down which of these to actually put on my board. Anyway, that's that's a video for another time. Um, should we plug these in? I think we should. I think we should plug them in. Okay, I'm going to do that now. Thank you very much for watching this far, if you have. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now because the next thing you see or hear will be these pedals plugged in. So, take care everyone. Bye!